Well, you made it. It is Friday, and Friday is the Tile Happy Hour, and the Tile Happy Hour is where you landed today. Today is a great day, and we want to welcome you to our conversation. Today, John and I are going to talk about glass tile, but I don't want he and I just to talk. I want everybody to talk. I want us all to contribute, and let's learn a little bit more about tile, glass tile, and anything else that may come up in today's conversation. We got a lot going on. It's been a busy week, but we made it to happy hour, John. Welcome. And you see the drink cam, so yes. Cheers, John. It. Oh, let me get my drink. What well, are you drinking you, today? You're supposed to be ready with your drink on uh, yeah. after the intro. <laughs> Cheers. What's up? Cheers, Craig. What are you drinking? Oh, John, we experienced something called COVID, and there was a lot of different people did different things. Well, during COVID, I found a recipe for something called Happy Jack. Uh -huh. and so this is my own made Happy Jack. I don't know if it's called a whiskey or what. Well, tell us more. It, uh, it is rough. It is rough. My wife thought, uh, she, she's like, what is all this stuff? And I'm like, I, I had bottles ordered. I had things in the uh, closet burping things and off gassing stuff. And uh, so I, I think in some circles it's called hooch. Uh -huh. I don't know. Um, I know there was a song about it. Uh, I, I don't think it's illegal because I haven't sold any of it. And personally, I don't think anybody would buy it. So how do you make, how do you make it? It is sugar, All right. apple juice, yeast, and thyme. Thyme like T H Y M E or no, thyme uh, like T I M E. <laughs> um, and I, I think I threw a couple of uh, cinnamon sticks in it just to try to get it bearable. Um, you know, you know what? Happy Jack is just Jack Daniels. <laughs> I'm happy with that. You, you, well, you're a smarter man than I am. Um, but uh, yes, so it, it, today was uh, Happy Jack. So that's the, what you're drinking today. I'm doing a little uh, gin and tonic, a little Bombay Sapphire. I was uh, just checking it out. 1761, made in England, a recipe from 1761. Uh, I can't beat a gin and tonic. It's good. I like no, it. you can't. Gin and tonic's probably one of my favorite cocktails. Um, so... Uh, what about gin? What kind of gin do you like? Hendrix is my favorite gin, but yeah. I, like I was, I, you and I were talking about earlier, uh, I, I'm going to try this Four Pillars. I, I, one of the other podcasters I follow, that's who they're sponsored by. I figure maybe I'll bring it on here. Maybe they'll sponsor right. us. We'll, we'll take we'll take their money. But um, how's your week been? It's been extremely successful, yeah. uh, but not without a lot of work, which is the life I lead and uh, yes. it's, it's good. I love, I love this industry. I love today's topic because, you know, I've been in the tile industry my entire life. I mean, literally my entire life. And in the world I came from in the you know, tile ceramic and then porcelain mm -hmm. glass almost didn't really exist, you know, you know, not that long ago as far as being in the mainstream. Yeah. And when glass tile came about, um, I thought it was going to be just a fad. I really did. So I was proved wrong with that, and I'm glad about that. And, and then it went to the phase where, okay, tile stores were selling it because mm -hmm. people were traveling the world, and they'd see a hotel room in you know Vegas or in Italy, and they see glass, and they wanted to use glass. So they started buying glass, and then installers would just be like, um, okay, you, you need tile done for your backsplash? That's 20 feet. Okay, I'm going to charge you $250. And then they show up and they're like, what's this stuff? That's right, yeah. And typically, like many other things in life, their first experience was a fail installation-wise. Yeah. They and uh, But everyone wised up and learned how to do things right, hopefully. And um, it's evolved. And we're here today with an amazing array of products. Yeah. Well, I, if, I, if I have my history correct, Tile Bar was started as a glass tile importer. Is that, isn't that correct? Wow, that's a great, yeah. So uh, Glass Tile Store was actually the original name of Tile Bar. And it, the uh, the CEO of Tile Bar kind of started off and wanted to visualize the tile 
website to be yeah. like a Zappos, you know, where you can order tile online, you have free shipping at the time and uh, 365 day return, which we still have at the tile bar. Um, and it, so yeah, it was glass mosaics and then it morphed into a little bigger tiles and glass and then ceramics and then porcelains and That's slabs crazy. of porcelain. Yeah. And uh, now it's, we have it's everything. Uh, yeah. Kitchen sinks. It's really amazing. It really is. Um, well, before we get too deep into the weeds, yeah. um, I'm thankful for everybody that's watching out there live. Participate in the conversation. Shoot us a comment. If we can get to you, we will before the show is over. If you're watching this on a replay, hit us up in the comments. Let us know what your questions are, what you found amazing, what uh, questions we answered for you, and um, just how you are participating in the tile and stone industry today. We want to hear from you. Yeah, we want to hear where you're watching from today. If if uh, it, it, throw that in the comments, we'll give you a shout out yeah. if we can. You know that would be fun. So if you are watching uh, live or if you're not alive, either way, figure out a way. Have <laughs> <That's right. laughs> have your next of kin post where you where you are. Stay on. Uh, but we are streaming live on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook, and uh, LinkedIn. So yep. we'd love to know where you're watching from. Uh, at minimum, just say, hey, this is where I'm at. If you have a comment or a question, let us know. If the show is already broadcast and this is a replay, uh, you know, shoot us uh, a little hello anyway. Follow the channel, too. You know, with please. Hit- yeah, uh, like and subscribe. Yeah, so, uh, and you will get notified when we go live. So this is our sixth episode of yep. the Tile Happy Hour. Many more episodes to come. We have a lot of uh, exciting things coming up. Some top secret, some not. That's right. And, and uh, you know, right now we're doing this show on Friday at four o'clock. Who knows? This may this, this may be a midnight on a Wednesday, or it could be a. I think we should do every day at six thirty a.m. Yeah, <laughs> not so. <laughs> yeah, we. Well, we got, well, I, I know one of the things we have coming up is uh, coverings, and uh, that's just in a few weeks. And we've been lucky enough to be invited uh, to participate in the podcast booth there. And, um, John, I look forward to seeing you there. We, we haven't been together in a few months yeah. and, uh, we'll be face to face there. And, uh, here's some information about coverings. If you don't know anything about coverings, coverings is North America's largest display of tile and stone. And it's coming to Orlando, April 18th through the 21st. And how, John, how much does it cost to get in? It's about a thousand dollars, but with your John to Disco and Craig Cahoon discount of a thousand dollars, you can get in for free. Oh so, wow! Yeah, so just go to any link, and they'll know that you know us, and it'll show up as free. And you can attend coverings. Uh, whatever your investment in time, in travel, and hotel is absolutely worth it because you get to see over one thousand exhibitors from uh, the industry all over the world, thirty-five and- different countries. Thir- wow, I didn't even know there was 35 countries. Was it, are there? Yeah, that's that's, that's, what, my, that's what my sheet says. Because <laughs> I say you see wow. that it says, "Please read." <laughs> Please read. It's part of our contract to to be on it. We have to read that. Um, but yeah, if you haven't been there, I'm an installer by trade, and uh, walking the floor is amazing. But they have amazing. And, and you're a little, and you're a little bit country too. I'm a little bit country. Um, a lot rock and roll, but, right. uh, the, uh, the classes are amazing. I know I nerd out when I go and I try to go to as many as I can and they're brought to brought to anyone that wants to attend by the major organizations in our industry, the TCNA, the NTCA, CTEF, all those initials are all there and you don't need to be MIA because then you could be KIA. Oh, you lost me. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, I I want to say that when people come to our podcast at one fifteen on the first Tuesday, the first day of the show, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. It is at the it's at the podcast booth. Correct. And we have a, a collector's item that um, I heard I heard is going to be yeah. They- oh, let's see if I, uh, yeah. So. Um- yeah, so these these are going to be hot topics here. Um, we got the uh, the drink cam, some uh, tile happy hour coasters. I, uh, this is not not easy to do uh, live, but uh, but these tile happy hour coasters are here, 
and um, we're going to be giving those away. John will sign them for you if you'd like. Wow. Uh, one day they're going to be sold on eBay for multiple, multiple yes. tens of cents. Only two per, two per customer. Only two per customer. John, this is a surprise. I hadn't told told you about this All yet, right. um, but I have something else. Really? Oh, let me let me take that off the screen. If you want a coaster, send us an email. We'll send you a coaster. I'll send yeah. you a coaster. I'll pay for the posting. Right. Um, but Let's also, um, somebody sent me this. All right. They know that uh, I normally will wear a nice. boggin, pardon the hair, but uh, I got a branded boggin from um, one of our team members. That is amazing. Isn't that cool? Uh, so, really cool. uh, shout out to Stephanie who, uh, sent me that she uh, made it herself. She said that she was, um, upset that I was wearing a non-branded boggin. So she sent me this one. Well, it is interesting because your avatar has a branded boggin. So it's like, yeah, you know, I, I did that and I could, but I never, uh, the, now I do have some of these branded boggins, but okay. they are, uh, they are only for our Tile bar team and their training, uh, okay, training bribes. Actually, that's what I bribe, uh, <laughs> bribe our team with, uh, for training. So look at us. We've got coasters, we've got a hat. I'm sure Stephanie will make more hats. I, I'm not sure what they cost, probably a hundred dollars each. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get an expense from you on that. And, <laughs> um, we're just, uh, just making all sorts of waves in the podcast layup live streaming yeah, this community. Has fun. This has been fun. Episode six. And you're going to be in for a real treat at our podcast live at covering. So if you're in town, definitely uh, stop by and say hello. And Daniela watching from Virginia. I think I said that right. I apologize if I didn't. Daniela I'm not even going to try the, the last name, but uh, Giuseppe, I love Virginia. Come on. How hard is that? How, what'd you say? <laughs> D Giuseppe. I, I could barely D. read Giuseppe. it. D Giuseppe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I well, love it. Danielle, let me know if I'm wrong. I'm sure I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, thanks for the uh, cue in on the topics. Uh, so, John, this week, I know you had a trade show yesterday, so you probably didn't get to your highlights. Uh, I'm, uh, you know. Well, the, re the, the, the thing is this. The highlights are in my brain. I mean, I've been living oh. and breathing tile and stone and glass, uh, so not a problem. I could wing it. Yeah, we had a trade show yesterday that was to builders um, and uh, developers and designers and architects. It was phenomenal, phenomenal expo, and um, just so glad to represent Tile Bar there. It was it was great, and um, we had actually we had uh, Rick Crane from Oceanside Glass, who is a valued uh, vendor of uh, Tile Bar. Uh, he was- And, he and the Tile Happy Hour is probably a uh, number one fan. Yes, he's actually up there. And then uh, Jeremy Solomon, who's our executive vice president and the king and supreme ruler of the LVT world. Correct. And uh, he was there. So we had a tag team, the Tile Bar team of three at this trade show, and it was phenomenal. It was really, awesome. really good. Yeah. Awesome. How, was, how was your week? Man, it's it's been crazy this week. We're um, updating a lot of technical information on the website, and um, you know, my goal uh, is to provide the most accurate information to not only our clients and customers, but to the tile industry world. So I, I, I I've worked really hard trying to all these new materials, getting the right installation information out there to the public so i've been writing a lot this week and and um and we got some new things coming to our website that is going to be really awesome and a really great uh benefit for anybody out there that's got a computer that can get on and you so know, uh it's important that, it's important work you know because knowledge is power and we t we started off saying we're glass tiled one of the biggest issues was when installers didn't know what they were dealing with or they just assumed it was the same as the last thing they installed um and you know that's and that leads into our topic right uh we we're, we're talking about glass yeah and there's different types of glass different types of glass tile manufacturing processes and also uh and then each one can call for its own installation method or sometimes it's the environment that calls for the installation method or the substrate um, or a combination thereof. So um, that's what's pretty cool about glass. It's not really 
I and the technology it. changes. I mean, you oh. got to think yeah. the setting materials we're using today, no way compare to the setting materials that, I mean, even when I got into the industry in the, in 2000, they were advanced compared to when you got into the industry in True. 1902. Yeah. And so those things are, are great. But I, I think we have a, a product that I've gotten a lot of questions on this week. And this, uh, I told you this earlier is it's funny. We're talking about glass tiles. seems like every time we come up, we, we, we plan our topics, I get questions. And so I got a question about the bespoke. Ah. Did I say that right? Bespoke, yeah, bespoke. Bespoke, uh, yeah, bespoke glass. Is right. And yeah. what was so funny is your highlight this week is about the bes bes oh. bespoke. Yeah, so the bespoke, I guess it's a English term for like custom made or tailored. Uh, and and you got me. Yeah, and I'm Scottish. Yeah, they there you go. Well, so you know, every week we both of us do something uh, and public facing, and um, one of them is my product highlight happy hour and you do your friday fails and today's focus actually happens to be on glass tile it happens to be the bespoke which is an which is a artisan or an art glass um, we'll explain that later yeah we, let's let's see let's uh take a gander at uh, right. what you put together hey it's john tedisco i'm here at tile bars video studio and we have a brand new line from oceanside glass north american glass manufacturer with some stunning material that's just beautiful. This is art glass, like stained glass. Uh, really, really nice. Made in huge sheets and then cut by water jet and create these beautiful patterns. Uh, this pattern is called Lantern. You see this beautiful jewel blue. Gorgeous, nice, subtle variations. Really sexy. A little brighter, a little livelier, like the ocean. Gorgeous, same pattern, just in a different color. Now here's a different pattern called Zest. Now, all these patterns come in multiple colors. I'm just showing you a few here. As you see, there's all linear rectangles stacked with different widths. And you can do it vertical or horizontal for two different looks. The same with this herringbone. And what's unique about this is a double herringbone. Two pieces put together. Uh, really, really nice. This is from Oceanside Glass. It's in stock at Tile Bar. Check it out. This is John Tedisco. We wish you a happy, happy hour. John, I love that. Uh, that is the type of glass that I remember when I started being very scared of because it was thin um, and, and some of the stuff early on, and it, it wasn't Oceanside because you, you can answer this question but um, later, but Oceanside, when, when I used it when I was installing, was always paper face mounted. I don't know if that's still true today. Well... Oceanside glass tile per se, the manufacturer has two different types of glass and they're okay. totally different except for the glass element, but the way they're made and how they use are totally different. So yeah, so Oceanside um, got into the business making cast glass, you know, so it's kind of pressed into a mold and fired at hot, probably 2000 degrees. And those, those ha that type of product has a lot of uh, capabilities, applications, exterior floors in, in many cases uh where the art glass that you're talking about is mm -hmm. even though it's a more expensive material the art glass uh it's it has no structural benefits meaning it's not for the floor uh it's very thin but it's what's used in jewelry used in uh, if you go to hobby lobby right or uh some of these stores uh you can find like glass that artists use and artisans use and they can make jewelry yeah. they can make uh, lighting fixtures uh, you can put it in cabinet doors and that's what that is that's the thin super thin art glass which most people call stained glass okay well see learning something every day yeah learning something every day and, um well, I want to talk daniela more liked that. our uh in our, our <laughs> pronunciation of her name and All she's right. uh she's not mad at us yeah. but uh she's uh glass top professional so uh she's gonna have some good information for us I like the crazy stuff. Please send me those. Yeah. The crazy stuff is what I live for. <laughs> That's a, that is how I do my job every day. Well, we have a lot to talk about with glass, but um, I'm assuming you happen to stumble across a fail this week. 
I did stumble across a fail this week, uh, okay. and I went a little overboard on the video, so I'm just uh, going to apologize ahead of time because sometimes I, I late at night I I wake up in the morning and I have this idea of doing a video. You know, I, I have an idea for a new intro because last week you had to apologize too, or the week you were in the shower or yeah. wherever you were in the tub. I think you should just start the podcast with, hey, I'm Craig Cahoon, and I apologize. <laughs> I apologize for anything that I say or do. That I may and my you. wife uh, <laughs> that I know she's watching, I apologize, honey. Oh! What do you mean? I can just paint it? Send me your best fail videos. I may, you may end up on the show. And I know that's popular. And I, th that's why I was like, man, somebody's going to be mad at me because I know that all the DIYers out there, if you watch HGTV and any anybody anywhere, they're like, they're like, just paint your tile. It'll be fine. That is ridiculous. I've seen every time I see that, I just want to like punch the TV. I'm like, what are you doing? It does not stick. It it, does and, they, not. and they post it. People are like amazing. I just saw one the other day. First, that's the first time I saw that Friday fail. I didn't see it today. And yeah, I was, it was very simple. Just showing that people put the roller on and it is, it is such a false sense of success yeah. and it looks awesome for a week. And it, right. it's so bad. Well, what but is could, crazy, and, and we can maybe get into this in another segment, is now there is a procedure in a um, a recommendation from NTCA to tile over tile. So if you don't want to go through the demo process and you have the room, just prep your wall, tile over it. It's, it'll last a lot longer, I promise. Yeah, I just I saw someone do a whole floor the other day on on somewhere on social media, and they will white tile and they're putting black inserts on diamonds and doing stencils i'm like this is a waste of time everyone's like amazing everyone was so happy um but i could top that okay I saw something uh even more cringe worthy worthy than that people were painting their sofas oh gosh no i swear it's a thing i just saw a couple videos on it and like painting your sofa yeah and i and i'm like i'm scrolling thinking everyone's gonna be like pretty upset about it and they were like this is cool what kind of paint you <laughs> yes you can do it i'm like what what can go wrong <laughs> oh gosh well i mean i guess with enough uh ingenuity you can do anything you want no enough wait did you say ingenuity or stupidity? ingenuity yeah <laughs> i mean who wants to sit on a painted couch that's got to be terribly crunchy yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't even think of that. I'm just thinking on a hot August day. The AC's not on yet. <laughs> yeah, that may be bad too. I don't know. <laughs> you know, uh, well, you talked about the art glass, and um, yeah. So, so there's art glass, and there's kind of a cast glass. There's a, in general, you know, two types of uh, material. Uh, and then there's hot, yeah, you know, and, and within that, there's there's hot glass and there's cold glass and there's warm glass. Also I only thing. install hot glass. Yeah. Hot glass is what I install. Exactly. That's I'm a hot installer. That is, that's in your advertising, right? Hot glass yeah. only. Hot but, glass by hot installer. <laughs> yes. But the cast it. glass is uh, fired at 2000 degrees. It's in a mold. Uh, it's more structural. It's usually um, you know, like a mosaic would be a quarter inch thick as okay. opposed to the art glass, which is about, you know, three millimeters, probably, uh, you know, what is that? A third of a, uh, yeah, I'm not sure, but yeah, it, it's really super thin. Uh, the art glass and you can't stand on it. You can snap it with your fingers. Um, well, tell me this, are there, I, I think about uses when I think about different types of materials. So you have these different types of glass. Can you use all of them everywhere? Are they all good for everything? I mean, well, in the bottom of a pool or well, what, no, what absolutely not. Them? What absolutely not. Well, so, you know, the manufacturers do have certain manufacturers, even though sometimes some make the same type of material, don't do it as well as others. Uh, but we can just paint a broad stroke, pardon the pun. Um, if you're doing art glass, for sure, is never good for outdoors, never good for floors, uh, as, and maybe not good for steam showers. But uh, but it's absolutely beautiful as a feature wall on your walls and your backsplash. Okay. That's fine. But a cast glass. Now, have you ever seen a glass 
patty? <laughs> I, I've seen peppermint patty. No. So no. I have a treat for you here. All so, right. I love show and tell. We should do this every week. Uh, that's the inside of your microwave. So, right. Uh, that's what it looks like. Is that not, am I not right? You were wrong. Oh. Uh, so the new heading, the new intro to um, our show, instead of saying, you apologize for having Craig Cahoon and I am wrong. So okay. just, it just, <laughs> gotcha. the first step of admitting you have a problem is just, you know, <laughs> yes, yeah. is admitting it. Uh, so this is a patty. So picture a mold that's shaped like this. Okay. And like a waffle iron kind of. And hot glass is poured into the mold. And if you see the outside parts here, they're they're not full tiles. But this is obviously like a three-quarter inch yeah, mosaic yeah. In, in the baby stages. And literally, it just they snap these off. Uh, so there's actually – see, there's actually a groove on both sides. This okay. particular series, so when you snap it off, the, the rough – there's like a little bit of a rough part. Uh -huh. But it's in the middle of the tile, so if you picture a oh, picture Lego, uh, uh, Lego my ego, right? Uh, that's exactly like that. So picture two uh, egos, and when you break them apart, the middle is a little rough. Yeah, the top but the middle is the best part. You're right. I don't mean the middle, but the edge in the middle. It's like so. Yeah. So that's what this is in this particular series. There's another series. Uh, now, uh, uh, did you? I didn't hear you say it. How do they make it square? Is it oh, cut okay. or is it snapped? It's snapped. So once this is made, this comes out of the kiln, uh, and it and it cools down, which takes. Um, well, in this case, this is this was annealed. I'll tell you about that. But it um it, it takes about five hours to cool down. Um, Got a but, shout out! It is the inside of your microwave, confirmed by Daniela. Real okay. <laughs> so all right, I'm gonna switch. Okay. I'll switch back to this one. So now um, there's so much to talk about. So this outside stuff looks like a lot of waste, but since it's glass, just it recycle it. Recycle so they melt it back down. Yeah, so, yeah. That, that so, is a great thing about glass is is it is a hundred percent recyclable, and it just keeps going through the process. So now what you can't see here, this side is smooth. And okay, this yeah. It has like the grout lines. And this is a different series of tile. So when you snap it, it doesn't break evenly on the face side. And it results in a little bit of more of a rustic look. And I'll show you what that is. Okay. So this tile here in Manhattan, there's a restaurant called uh, Rosa Mexicano. And they have a wall that mimics a... Um, a cliff in Mexico where people dive off the cliffs and it's this huge wall. They spent like a half a million dollars on this wall and it's adorned with this exact tile. This was actually, this was actually my submittal sample from years ago. Uh, okay. And uh, the face of this tile is slightly irregular. Yeah, I uh, see that. And point, I'm assuming that has to do with the face of the press or. That, well, no, because when you die, so it, Picture the waffle iron with only one side having the grooves and the other side is smooth. So okay. when you snap it, this face, one side that doesn't have the groove, it breaks a little irregular, irregularly and yep. and it gives you this irregular grout edge. It's intentional. Yeah. It's and, intentional. And, and, uh, yes. And, uh, and th that that's done a lot in, in the tile now. It's the rustic look and, and giving you that. Now tell yeah. me the difference. You, you you mentioned a big word that I don't understand. I thought you <laughs> not incontinence, and so it was something else. Uh, it was called a kneel. Apologize again, anybody. A kneel. So cast glass when it comes out of the kiln, uh, okay. it's in a factory, and the air temperature of the factory, even though it's very hot, it's nothing like inside the kiln. So when it comes out of the kiln, it gets it's very cold as far as the glass is concerned, and automatically heat gets trapped inside the tile okay. and and it's called latent l-a-t-e-n-t -E latent stress so there's stress inside the tile so a lot of tile uh, a lot of tile that we carry is not annealed it's just regular glass and there's so much glass in the market that's not annealed but some companies anneal their glass and what it it's a kiln but it's like a reverse kiln when uh -huh. it's done firing it goes through another kiln and it's like the, it's the length of a football field, and literally, it 
it goes it brings the temperature down slowly in stages 2000 okay. 1800 yeah. when a time it gets so it allows the uh it could cool down not control, like it's like a controlled cool down control cool down which so, i'm assuming is is less stressful than the just like when you um you take a hot something out of your microwave that's been in there and you put it directly under cold water you know it could shatter i'm, I'm assuming that's it, similar it's it's similar to that so it, it latent so a, tile, a glass tile that's been annealed uh is missing it's absent of stress inside the tile and the stress inside the tile is fine but if you happen to be like in a freeze thaw scenario it could be better to have an anneal tile or it's advantageous not all pool tile is annealed but uh so if you take a tile that's annealed and wow. you like tap it with a little hammer it won't well, let me let me rephrase it. if you take a tile that's not annealed it's more likely to like shatter or break on like you like tempered Sort of. Yeah, it, it it's in the same it's in the same uh, realm of technology as tempered and not tempered. So yeah, so and when um, you purchase glass tile, John, I'm asking you a lot of questions. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, when you purchase glass tile, is that like written on the package? How how do you know if it is or not? Um, it's usually not annealed, and but you have certain manufacturers and certain series, so Oceanside's uh, cast glass products are all annealed. Okay, Their art glass is. I don't think art glass can be annealed. That's just a, a different animal even though it's glass uh so you could tell you know if something is um like rated for floor use glass then it's a good chance it's annealed okay um, i didn't realize they had glass that was floor rated <laughs> until today uh, this is absolutely floor floor rated this tile see I, and i guess probably i've seen that tile before and i would have just said it was Maybe not thought it was a pure glass tile. It was something that looked well. Like well, there's another thing to talk about. You see the little iridescence going on? Yeah. Um, that iridescence here, um, you don't see it as much on this side. You see it on this side. Right. When a glass tile comes out of the kiln, there's a choice. You can then spray on this, like, while the glass is hot, spray on this... Um, coating it's uh of this iridescence and it fuses and becomes part of the glass it actually but it gives it that iridescence so the iridescence is on the surface only it's not like it's through and through it, it lasts it's not that it scratches off right. but the, the the iridized tile is a topical i wouldn't want to say topical it's not because it, it gets to be fused with the in. it's kind of yeah. like a glaze on, yeah, a, on a ceramic tile. Exactly. Well, I, exactly. I was doing some research today. H how much, uh, what do you think the sales in the U.S. for uh, glass, you have an idea of, of what that would be? Well, $92 million from my sales. I'm not sure no, what else well, everyone else is doing. I, we got to take you out of the, the picture. Yeah, I have no clue. I really um, don't. It, I was surprised. Three point seven billion dollars. Wow! And uh, that's kind of the market value of that part of the market. And what what was uh, interesting is, as I read about it, is I haven't been kind of a commercial contractor. You know, we don't deal in glass a ton; just accents right. like this. Um, I would have thought it was declining. But the predictions are in tw by 2028, it'll be almost six billion dollars. Well, do you know where a lot of that growth is? Yes, I do. Really? Um, looking at it worldwide, North America and Asia are the fastest growing in glass tile. Okay. What I thought was interesting about that, and I'd like your opinion on it, Europe was not. So I'm wondering, has it cooled off in Europe? Is it not as popular in Europe? Or well, are they just like done with it? Well, I mean, Romans made mosaics with glass, so they they kind of this is old school to them. So you know, everything yeah. comes <laughs> goes around, comes around. Uh, I think I think in the United States and some Asian countries, they really have been committed to production, producing uh -huh. glass tiles. So I think it's the availability, and in Italy um, and Spain. Although, like an old hat. yeah, well, I mean, there are there are glass manufacturers in in Italy, but some of the manufacturers that produce in Italy also have factory in India and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's all the same technology. Um, 
But I just think um, – I just think – that i don't know what i think i really don't know i don't okay. know well if you don't know what you think i don't yeah. know who who knows yeah. what you think no but well, uh, you know me, where uh, you're using glass more is also outdoors with a high quality product uh in got you. what i mean outdoors is um you know water features spas yeah. water lines pools pool that, uh, that's cavities. that's where that's where i feel like i've seen glass the most is water features i mean that that was the first I mean, the first pool I did was a hundred percent glass pool. Right. Um, well, and and why? Because it doesn't need to be sealed. It was fired at two thousand degrees, so the heat's not yep. going to affect it. If it's a high yep. quality product, you don't have to worry about the freeze thaw and any instability. Yep. So, um, and and you know, a lot of time people think of glass as blue, like blue, like a cobalt blue, like I just showed you. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times, those blues you can't get really nice in ceramics or porcelain. So. You can accomplish many colors in glass, but yeah. uh, and pools you're usually thinking of pool green or blue. Mm -hmm. So you can do a lot of nice colors in glass, and when the sun hits it, it's really that iridescent cool. glass and the sun in a pool. It's it's hard to get a better look. I wish we had some pictures we could show people. Um, I've got some know. pictures. Oh, okay. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, let's let's talk about the design. Um, and speaking of pools, this is your house. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That but uh nice. yeah i think i'd like to thank uh, rick for um for 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 sending some of that stuff uh these some of this data this way well look at this he just he stole my line here it doesn't need to be sealed but yep. you know yep. what's well, going I on knew, here uh, you were saying that and i was like gosh he's gonna steal my thunder wow. on my, my slide can you back up can you back up a slide if that first slide uh, well, this is the first slide it started on oh. the second slide oh, okay. but if you want to look at the second slide the second slide was I'm guessing this is that cast material. Um, well, yes. And something really interesting about cast glass uh -huh. is versus art glass. Art glass, you cannot bend it. You cannot make trim pieces. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. It's so thin. I mean, it, it's it's brittle. It, it's, it, you can't bend. Well, you can't even do it. It doesn't exist. So need a little close up here, but check this out. If you see a if you see a trim yep. that is curved, mm -hmm. then it has to be cast glass because they okay. could bend. So if you see something that's curved and if you're doing a spa and you want a, a base, a, you know, a, a coping, yep. uh, you need to do a really high quality manufacturer that can make matching trim. And there are very few companies that do that. Um, I, got I, word from, get I got word from an Italian that, uh, it still sells very well in Italy. Oh, that's so, good to hear. That's good really good. So cast glass being used on a pool deck and interior. So so it is horizontal there, right? Look at that. It's um I didn't even notice the deck outside where it says the uh, the markers. So yeah. I'm, fo I'm focusing on the blue in the pool and the yeah, water. That's right. that's what I was looking at too, but then I, I was like the pool deck, you know. And normally, I mean, traditionally commercial construction that's going to be a porcelain mosaic and you know, I can't tell you how many square feet of um, dowel tile unglazed two by two mosaics right. I have put in in, in the world, and um, that 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 was the go to. I didn't realize that we had this option. And yeah, if you look at that tile on the outside, if I'm not mistaken, that's a Moroccan blend. The name of the color, um, huh? I'm not sure, but um, I'm not from Morocco, so I don't know. Yeah. But, it is, uh, uh, so it is all glass that's really uh, I'm just noticing all that now really cool yeah uh, um here it, I think is your oh this is cast glass well also. okay so I know why you said that this look you only could accomplish with art glass until right. this line this specific line is a new line and it mimics uh, art glass because it has a, a blend of glass and a blend of colors uh it looks like art glass is art glass but it performs like cast glass and you know okay. why it performs like cast glass because it is cast glass i don't know no, that's the answer <laughs> and as you said it is class class <laughs> yeah but yeah. i caught yeah. that well this, look at me I, I'm, I'm learning i'm learning i think stuff. that i think that hat's too tight so um, <laughs> it, it actually is really snug stephanie thank you well stephanie i appreciate it wow i, I had no idea what slides you were bringing up and guess what i have here 
I have that exact tile in a different Look color. Look at that. Well, my picture looks better than your um, your crappy camera. There you so, go. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, now, bronze glass is, uh, I mean, I've seen stuff like this, which I don't know if you remember back in the day, Quest Tech. Quest Tech, yeah, but they had, but, they, but there was a it was a polymer that was like a it right. Was, it was a polymer, but it, it it had the same look to it, and um, that's what I thought of when I saw this uh, come across. Oh yeah, so so people wanted a metal tile, and Quest Tech was pretty much a f- the fanciest plastic tile you could find, and it was cool, but it didn't have any mechanical properties that were good. But if you did right. a backsplash, it was fine. And then they were, weren't they bought out by, I think someone took them on and crossed. I think so. I, I don't know that they're in business as Quest Tech any, yeah. any longer, but I'm not sure. Who so this are. says bronze. That's just the name of the color. It's not bronze, okay. but but that that's kind of like an iridized, that, that, that glass, that color is accomplished with that last step that I talked about. That's kind of sprayed on. The spray and on and then get, the ring. Yeah. And it's fired. It's right. Okay. So here, bespoke. Bespoke is... Looks like that other line that has the um, you know marbleized. This uh-huh. is literally glass mixed together. This is very artisan, and this is one like color. Like a milkshake. Yeah, and it is one color, or more like um, what's the ice cream that when you mix uh, the cold stone the way you mix it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Picture that. Um, now, so the the ribbon. So when when this is produced, it's produced as a sheet. Picture like a sheet of. Uh, oh, there like it that? is. Yeah. Well, that that picture on the on that has the note on there that says face or top, whatever that says, uh-huh. um, that's a that's a two foot by four foot piece. Um, that was cut from a larger piece. When it comes out of the kiln, it it's comes hundred yards of, long. It's yes. Oh shit! It says it on the bottom. Damn! <laughs> I you was thought I was smart, didn't you? Yeah, no, it was a yeah. I was I was surprised. I was so focused on the picture, I didn't see that. Yeah, it's a hundred. So the kiln is not a hundred yards. Like the kiln, it, the 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 conveyor belt, let's say that that goes through the kiln. Once it gets out of the kiln, it's it's a hundred yards, which is the size of what in a sporting. A uh, hundred yards is a football field. This is correct. So picture a football field uh, with one piece. It's one piece of glass, and then they cut it into. Yeah. Oh, they got a piece of it. Yeah, that is cool. Oh, let me turn it around the other way so you don't see the tag. But yeah. Yeah. That is really cool. So you can see it's uh, three millimeters thick. It's about a third of an inch. Uh, so it's uh, it's pretty. I'm sorry, an eighth of an inch thick. No, eighth, third. Yeah. The eighth of an inch. And um, yeah, that's pretty cool. So so then so that particular factory, what they do is they cut this that big uh, hundred yard. Um, length piece of glass into two foot by four foot blanks and those aren't sold uh typically they're not sold as tiles that big yeah they're then that's just for handling or right. if you're selling it to an art glass uh there's a designer artist uh well known in new york allison eden and she makes uh-huh. custom mosaics so shout out she's a type of person that would utilize you know blanks like that and cut them in her shop and take it to the next step uh, her studio so uh so that's how people make all these art glass uh, tiles so you see the uh that double herringbone pattern that i talked about pretty, in my, uh, my they're pretty cool I, I love i love that yeah um, and then that really mod looking mosaic up top um which is really cool and in that mosaic it's hard to see uh, some of that is like almost uh like a silver like gold leaf or silver leaf that yeah. in, a, in a part Really super cool, super mod, um, really, really nice mosaic tile. That is well, really nice. I, I tell you, there, there's so many different colors and things, but if we don't hurry up, we're not going to get into my part, uh, not my part of the show, but the part I want to talk about the most is the pain and the cost of installation. Yeah. Wah, wah. I, 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 I don't want, and, and, and this is not, uh, uh, I don't want to uh, rain on the parade because okay. the, I think um, in the industry, there are some um, pitfalls that you can fall into. And I want to be here to say that if you know them ahead of time and you address them ahead of time, they don't have to be. You can have a successful installation. And you don't have to be scared when you read a spec that says glass tile. And uh, what do you need key, to do? What's the number one thing you need to do? The number one thing you need to do is uh, be have a qualified installer install it. Exactly. That is yeah. that's the key. And 
Um, I would say for all of those out there that are DIY, there's nothing wrong with trying it, but do your research because they it is unique. Uh, the material, as you've seen, is it's beautiful, it's unique, and it's expensive. So when you mess yeah. up, it hurts. Yeah. Um, and I will say, John, back in the day, in the early 2000s, there were a lot of quality installers, uh, not installers, quality manufacturers, uh, Oceanside being one of them, Bazatza, and there was a, a, a bunch of them out there. Such but they were uh, coming on the market were some of these... Uh, less expensive and che- more uh, cheaper made materials that had the look, but right. they didn't have the quality. And so there's less think, forgiveness, right? You need it like it was less. Leeway. Yeah. The, um, the worst part was the mounting structures would fall apart and uh, the glues that they were using to hold the glass on the sheet, right. you'd get it wet and they'd fall apart. Um, that's why I got, and I still suggest it today, even though, um, I'm learning that I, I may not be 100% right. I love paper face mounted glass because glass tile, especially when you have a uh, three quarter by three quarter, or uh, I mean, they even make them smaller than that. What are five eighths by five eighths yeah. tiles? You have to have mortar contact with that tile, and it has to be, in my opinion, 100%. And the only way to get it is to have a paper face mounted. Um, in, material in demanding, in demanding environments, right? The backsplash doesn't matter. <clears throat> backsplash is not not that critical. Um, but if you're going to put a pool in, my suggestion is is a paper face or a face mounted. Now they make the plastic mounted, and they've gotten that technology has gotten a lot better over the last few years. I remember back in the day, you get some of that plastic mounted glass, you get it installed and you come to pull the plastic off the next day. It's stuck. So it pulls your, uh, yeah, thing. So that's why the paper works so well. Bespoke um, is, uh, is clear film. Bespoke is clear film. Clear film. Yeah. And then other products, uh, are paper face mounted yeah. and they, they did add something really cool here, which was not originally there. Yes. Well, and the reason it's there, and uh, believe it or not, I've gotten these questions in the last month. People will install it backwards. And I got uh, actually two days ago, I got the question from one. um, I'm not going to say who it's from because they should have known the answer is the paper keeps coming off when I put it in the mortar. Oh, and I was like, yeah, it does. Um, So uh, it has been installed upside down and back upside down or wrong side out. I don't know which yeah, one wrong it is. side, wrong, wrong side, side out, out yeah. many, many times. And, um, that is, uh, that's just that inexperience. Do your research. So I, do I you, you use organic adhesive, like D 2001 glue out of a can for glass? I don't like it. Um, if it suggests it and the, and, and I don't know what D 2000 is. I, I know, right. um, you know, the, what is it? Type two mastic. Yeah, type two mastic, right? I, I mean, a type two mastic. I think will stick to it. It's a chemical bond. You're going with a chemical bond. Yeah. And um, for a backsplash, I probably wouldn't think twice about it and install it. Um, right. But uh, I like mortars, and the mortars today are super uber sticky, and um, they work yeah. well with glass. The great thing about mortars, and especially if you have a clear glass, you can tint your mortar to match your grout. So therefore. You've got a consistent, um, a consistent palette that looks uh, good all the way. So there's when you a say lot of mortar, tips and tricks. Yeah, well, I'm sure you have, but when you say mortar, what's 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 underlying in all mortar? What's underlying in all organic adhesive? What's the two, the two different Latex. materials? So organic material, no, but I mean like the substance. Uh, mortar is is cementitious, right? It's correct. Where a glue glue out of a can, it's like a paste. There's no mm-hmm. cement in there, is there? There's no cement. It's it's just a mixture of uh, chemicals. You know, latex being one of them, and, right? Um, and it's organic based, uh, which back in the day used to be a mold inhibitor. Now they have mold repellents and all sorts of stuff right. that jazz that stuff up. But um, I love mortars. I, I think uh, yes, they're not as easy. 
Um, but they're less expensive than uh, well, glue. Why are they not as like, what's the experience? What, what's the experience difference when you're using a mortar? I know they're different mortars and you mentioned stickiness. Yeah, but... I think the difference in the mortar, uh, difference from mortar than glue is it's a lot easier to open up a bucket of glue, get your trowel and go. A okay. mortar, you've got to measure water. You've got to mix it correctly. You've got to time it. And if you don't know what you're doing, you can uh, mess up you know, a $35 bag of mortar because you left it in the bucket too long. So there's a lot of, if you don't know what you're doing and you haven't done your research, there's, there's some right. pitfalls you can run into that cause the pain. Now, what about from mortar A to mortar B to mortar C? There's different mortars. Yeah. It, it's really just like going from, uh, just a car, you know, you got a Honda and you've got your Bentley and, all of them will get you from point A to point B, but the Bentley's got a lot more bells and whistles. Same right. thing with your mortars. Your, your inexpensive $7 bag of mortar you get from Home Depot or Lowe's has a lot less chemicals. And when I say chemicals, I mean sticky stuff. Right. Sticky stuff. But when you see that bag next to it that's $32, you're like... There can't be much difference. There's a lot of difference. Right. There's a lot of difference. There's, and uh, we talk about it all the time in our training sessions. There's the difference in the margin. You know, you can mess up very little with a cheap mortar and it still be okay. You can mess up a lot more with a more expensive mortar and still be okay, but you can't do the opposite. Good, good point. Yeah. So, like I used the word forgiving before, right? It's a little forgiving, yes. right? And, <clears throat> and so, so what, is the experience of using a high quality, do they have mortars that are uh, actually say for glass tile? Like Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of those mortars are tenable. So, um, you know, oh, the big cool. uh, thing about glass is it's in, incandescent. No, that's not right. Uh, it's, yeah. Translucent. It's, it's translucent. It's it translucent. translucent. Not all of it, right? Some not all of it's translucent, opaque. but some of it is. So therefore, if you don't, set it correctly you can see what's going on behind it which uh as uh, installers get better at the process that's not as big of a deal but when you um have a really thin tile it's really easy for your mortar to push into your grout joints oh that's another and, issue and then when the mortar pushes into your grout joints it's, there's no room for grout. <laughs> there's no room for grout. And then you're trying to clean it out with a razor knife on a really thin yeah. tile. You, you got to. So now they make mortars um, that are that you can have the exact same color and texture as your grout. Oh, that's wild. So that therefore you, you, you get rid of that danger of being a little bit sloppy and um, having to mess up your installation because you're trying to dig out thin set wow. in between your thing. So it was, what's also interesting about the, you know, the setting material world, the, the mortars cure with air, right? Correct. And they're exposed to air. I guess there's some chemical, you know, things going on also, but glass, since it has no porosity, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't, it takes a lot longer for air to get to the bed. So before you talked about the organic adhesive, the, the glues, I've seen jobs where like never dry because it never got any air to dry and yeah. it stays like moist and slimy where a thin set will cure with some time. Yeah. Do they, do they have yeah. You run the risk. Go, I'm sorry. What was that? Do they have thin sets that dry quicker than others. Yeah. 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 And you, and um, yeah, you have rapid setting thin sets that can dry with, you know, be hard and stable within 30 to 45 minutes. Um, but you know, we used to, we had that problem a lot when these porcelain tiles got so big because they don't, um, let water come through them either the water vapor. Right. And then what doubly oh. on the commercial side adds to that is you waterproof a lot of stuff or put a liquid applied crack isolation, which doesn't allow water through it. So you've got a sandwiched oh, wow. mortar I didn't think of that. between there. And um, You're I've paying seen extra it. for no moisture coming through. But yeah, there's no moisture moving. It's only coming out the grout joints. And what do designers want? No grout. Very small grout joints. So yeah. you had very little, um, uh, very little vapor uh, being able to move through the system, which does cure. Um, right mortar but, but there is but i think the moral of the story is get the right installer who's going to use the right product because it exists correct yep do your research get the right stuff and 
um, because yes, it's expensive to put in. It's expensive to purchase. It's expensive to um, install, right. but it's three to four times exp more expensive to replace it. But it's 10 times sexier than tile sometimes. So it, 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 yeah. it is, it is some, um, I, I, I do love glass tile and, um, you know, I, I wish you'd invite me over, um, to your, oh, to your pool. Do we have any other pictures going on there? No, that's it. I was just going to say, I, I right, wish we good. could have, I, I'll bring the hooch right, that, and uh, we can sit there and we'll do our, a live stream from, from those chairs. Nice. There. Oh, so wait, go back to that for a second. So that's like a sunning deck. That's like a new, I don't know if it's a new thing, but it's a thing. So yeah. you have a pool on the far end, which is deep, but this is like, sh appears to be shallow. Yeah. yeah so we can cool. be like seals. You know how seals kind of just. No, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And what's, what do you think that decking is? I, it's glass. Oh, that decking is probably yeah. paver tiles, porcelain. It looks porcelain. like porcelain. It doesn't look. I would say, you know, 10 years ago it would be stone, but stone has a lot more variant than that. I would, I would say that's porcelain. Yeah. I'm going to vote that it's stone. Okay. I'm going to vote that you're wrong again. You, you may be, I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I may be wrong. I've been wrong before and I will be wrong again. It sounds like a song. Is that a Billy Joel song or something? I think it's <laughs> no, I, I don't think so, but I can write that song. It'll be good. Right. Well, John, good. I, I, I've enjoyed the conversation about yeah, glass. Tile. I thought it was amazing. Yeah, I, I think uh, it's all about knowledge. It's all about learning. If yep. and um, you know, we love the industry and we love the products. And and we look at this one hour and two seconds. This is amazing. I thought we just started this show. I so, know. Well, um, I think this is really cool. I'm glad that we got together on this Friday, our sixth episode of the Tile Happy Hour. We have more episodes coming up, um, and we're really excited to see everyone at coverings if you're there please yeah we got some by. stuff we got some neat stuff that uh hopefully in the next uh, couple of weeks we can announce that may be happening at uh coverings. Yes. yeah but regardless you will see us there we we may um we'll try to control the crowds um to get john's autograph but uh if you do say hey uh tell us what you want us to talk about uh we'd love to ha let you buy us a drink i mean that i think all those things are <laughs> wow. good but i think in the meantime you need to be following us you need to be following us on one of our channels uh commenting uh giving us some feedback and um just staying engaged and involved in the tile industry and the tile industry news yeah so uh on youtube specifically if you go to at tile the world or you go to the tile channel uh you'll be able to see our individual youtube channels uh, and you can uh, if you subscribe then the benefit of that is you'll get notified when uh, a live broadcast is scheduled you'll get notified when it goes live and um you know it really it really an honor to have you guys here whoever's watching this it's been fun uh, we're looking forward to our next episode and if you have any comments or questions please post it if you're looking for one of our brand new Ooh. coasters uh please uh let us know so uh this is john tedisco and i'd like to wish you peace health and happiness yep and if you want a uh beanie i'm sure send me an email i'm sure stephanie will make you one um it's been fun it's been great remember we gotta all keep learning together and tile the world Thank <music> you.